windswept plateau, a young wolf battles for survival. He is Black Wolf, a two-year-old loner who recently broke from his pack. No wolf wants to be alone. It's too hard to make a living without allies. But Black Wolf is willing to take the risk for a higher status, a better territory, and a chance to breed. The urge to be with his own kind drives him onward. Until he stands before a new valley ruled by a mighty pack. Their presence draws him closer, but this is dangerous ground. Here, conflict is a way of life. High rank and breeding rights are often achieved through force. Many die young. But he is no ordinary wolf. Instead of strength and aggression, he's armed with cunning and he brings his own recipe for success. His entire young life has led to this moment. It all began two years earlier and many kilometers away in Yellowstone's thermal caldera. Little is known of Black Wolf's early life Knowledge of other Yellowstone wolves can paint a broad picture. Like all wolves, he was born within a family unit, a pack. In this pack, a white female is the reigning matriarch. Her daughter is a subordinate and Black Wolf's mother. At two months, the youngsters enjoy a pampered life. The adults constantly feed, groom, and generally fuss over them. His grandfather, the pack's alpha male, takes charge of today's food delivery. He won't allow other adults to eat until the little wolf gets his fill. Young pups are exempt from the hierarchy of adult society. Their job is to eat and play. But they develop a pecking order of their own. Black Wolf usually ends up on the bottom. His brothers and sisters practice the dominance they'll use later in life. But aggression isn't really his thing. He just loves the game and exploring the riverbank beside the den. Right now, this is his entire world. But there's plenty for a curious pup to discover. Beyond the safety of the den, Yellowstone is a more dangerous place. Black Wolf's grandfather must face the hazards if he's to feed his pack. Wolves are hunters, but when he finds an elk carcass, he turns scavenger. Problem is, he's not alone. The ready meal attracts a mother grizzly bear. The wolf protests but there's little he can do against 130 kilos of muscle and thick hide. But even a bear must be careful. The smell of blood seems to drive bison into a defensive display. They turn their aggression on both predators. Finally, the grizzly has had enough. 
she rejoins her waiting cubs to look for an easier meal. In this game of round robin, perseverance pays off. The young ones are blissfully unaware of the effort it takes to feed them. They're putting on about one and a half kilos a week, eating nearly every day. During the short warm season, Yellowstone's youngest residents are in a race to gain weight and strength as fast as possible. By mid-October, Black Wolf tops 20 kilograms. He and his brothers and sisters are nearly full-grown and able to keep pace with the adults. Now he can begin a critical stage in his education. His first lesson in hunting. In the fall, Yellowstone's elk herds migrate from the mountainsides to lower valleys. The wolves know where to find them. The alpha male leads the charge, and the other adults synchronize their attack. A few steps behind, the youngsters watch and learn. With adults to teach him and a stable pack in which to grow, Black Wolf is on his way to becoming a hunter. But his small pack is vulnerable. He is the first to notice a strong scent, the smell of other wolves. His grandparents know all too well what it means. Invaders. A rival clan from the south has slipped into their territory. They're a large pack of tough bison hunters, and they're looking to grab this land by intimidation or by force. As his first winter arrives, Black Wolf's world is under siege. His family challenges the intruders, but their howls betray the small size of the pack. The invaders know they have the advantage, and they charge. Their mission is to destroy the heart of the small pack by killing its leaders. The family's one hope is escape. Black Wolf's mother gathers the young ones and leads them over a ridge to safety. They wait for grandmother, the matriarch, to catch up. But she, too, will not be coming. The white female fought to guard her homeland and protect her family. She is mortally wounded and stays in her territory to the end. Black Wolf, his mother, and three siblings are cut adrift. They have lost their leaders providers, and teachers. His mother cannot hunt and care for all the young on her own. 
Wolves routinely go several days without food. After two weeks, the pangs of hunger grow more intense. There is prey in this new territory. Black Wolf has never hunted before. If there's a time to step up, it's now. Black Wolf draws on his powerful instinct for the chase. He tries to tap in to what he's learned. But the prey seems to sense his inexperience. Two kilometers away, his sister is trying to scavenge. But the carcass she finds is already claimed. Coyotes are a tough adversary. Quick on their feet with a nasty bite. And they will not relent. After two hours, she retreats. At every turn, the quest for food is a failure. Even the ravens don't put much stock in Black Wolf's chances. They often follow wolves on a hunt looking for scraps. Rarely do they return the favor. But a gathering of birds nearby catches his eye, and his nose guides him to the strong scent of carrion. An old elk has died. Yellowstone's harsh winter has taken one life and saved another. Each day, Black Pup's mother sends up a message. She is in estrus and her need to mate is nearly as strong as her will to survive. Her howls identify her as an available female. They read like a beacon to any solitary male. But no one answers her call. For two more weeks, she tries to scavenge enough food for the ragtag family. But the job is too big for her alone. Winter blows icier than ever, taking a toll on all who dwell in Yellowstone. Until one January morning, a distant sound drifts in on the cold air. A young male wolf wanders into the neighborhood. He's a disperser, a wolf out on his own, searching for a mate. The young mother eagerly responds. And an exchange of calls guides him to her. As for Black Wolf, he's just excited to have a visitor. After all, an adult might be bringing food. Or maybe he's up for a game of tag. The new stepdad proves to be a solid provider.
The pack is safe from starvation. Black Wolf and his siblings are free just to be pups again. Play is more than fun, it's critical. Social skills and hunting technique emerge in a wrestling match. A pine cone stands in for a fleeing mouse. As always, the young wolf's curiosity is boundless. Ice holds a special fascination. Solid, yet wonderfully breakable. There's no better toy. Still, carefree childhood can't last forever. Black Wolf is a yearling now, bringing food for the family. He must become an elk hunter. One morning, his stepfather leads him and his brother to a nearby pond. A small group of cow elk have come to drink. Black Wolf eagerly launches the chase. But as before, the prey fights back. A kick from an elk can break a wolf's jaw. Once again, the young predator falters at the critical moment. Taking on big prey is daunting and Black Wolf just can't make the leap alone. But now, his stepfather is by his side. The yearling rallies, and together they charge back. Where one wolf fails, two succeed. Finally, brother charges in to help finish the job. Black Wolf is a hunter now. Yet, in the moment of triumph, this successful partnership is about to be broken. At the end of his second year, he feels an irresistible calling. The urge to mate pulls him away from his family. To answer the call, he must leave. He begins to wander to the edges of his home territory for days, then weeks, until one day, he doesn't turn back. He steps into the unknown as a lone wolf. What's that smell? Oh yeah, we went to the wet market earlier. Mom will be in the car soon. What should we do? Febreze eliminates odors soaked in fabrics, leaving only freshness. For odors inside fabrics, mm. your car is so fresh. Febreze. In just a month, I started to feel the difference. My fine lines seem to have reduced. Even my dark spots faded. Total Effects totally works for me. Why settle for partial effects? Find the seven signs of aging with Olay Total Effects. My biggest challenge is getting grease off the kitchenware. That's why I only trust the new Glow Professional. It has powerful professional ingredients that cut through tough grease. Leaving your dishes squeaky clean. Now at work and at home, I always have professional results. New Glow Professional.
Sistem kad daftar kanak-kanak bendung kes penculikan. Undingan Meja Bulat Mahasiswa Nasional bakal bincang rasionalisasi perbadanan tabung pendidikan tinggi nasional. Laporannya setengah jam dari sekarang dalam Berita Nasional. Most young males choose to disperse like this, but it's tough going. Food is harder to catch and keep. Large prey is too formidable. He needs to think smaller. Much smaller. Thieves dog his every step. No morsel is too meager for a coyote to steal. But they underestimate his determination. They can hassle and taunt, but they can't shake his focus. Black Wolf gets his rodent. But the coyotes get the last word. He endures this vagabond life for one reason. Find a mate and end the solitude. Black Wolf calls out and listens for a reply. There's something in the distance. A sound, but not a wolf. Something strange and frightening and getting closer. In an instant, the sky unleashes chaos, a deafening roar and blinding snow. Then, a sharp sting he slips into darkness. Four hours later, Black Wolf emerges from his encounter with man. He is now a tagged and collared animal. Yellowstone Wolf number 302. Like so many of his fellow wolves, he will be monitored by humans. Now, his movements and behavior will be well documented. The ordeal does not deter him long. He pushes north until he stands before a broad valley. The place seems tailor-made for wolves to live well. And they do. One of Yellowstone's largest wolf packs rules this valley. The Druid Peak Pack, 17 wolves strong. He's an outsider here an enemy. Strolling into their territory is asking to be attacked. But something tells him to stick around a while.
pretty face can have that effect. She's one of the young druid females, and her demeanor seems friendly. Downright enthusiastic is more like it. For him, it's a tug of war between attraction and fear. There's good reason to be wary. Her father is the druid leader, a powerful alpha male called 21. Black Wolf tries to play it subtle. If only she'd stop bouncing around. Too late. Alpha males kill intruders like him. This is a life or death decision. Black Wolf must either run for his life or turn and face his attacker in a head-on challenge. But given two options, he picks a third. He faces his rival, then immediately surrenders. The charm offensive fails. Now he's in trouble. In his panic, he runs straight for the park road. A bad idea. More than a dozen Yellowstone wolves have died in traffic. Most won't go near it. But that is his saving grace. The road is like a force field. It stops the attacker in his tracks. Black Wolf is safe for the moment so he decides to hang around a while. He flits about the pack, serenading the Alpha's charcoal gray daughter and every other female within earshot. When 21 catches him, he runs back to the road. This behavior is hardly typical of a male wolf. Challengers like him usually fight for dominance or move on. But there's a method to Black Wolf's madness that could indicate a clever breeding strategy. The Druid pack has many females, but 21 the druid Alpha can't mate with them because they're his relatives, mostly daughters. That's not to say he doesn't try once in a while, but when he does, he gets an earful. It's how wolves avoid inbreeding. In 2003, Black Wolf becomes a father. On spring days, when the coast is clear, he sneaks in to the druid den to visit his pups. He's pulling off a unique balancing act. He's not a pack member, but he's not really an outsider either. Perhaps he's just biding his time, sensing an impending opportunity. The Druid Alphas, 21 and his mate, are both old wolves. In early 2004, the Alpha female dies. A few months later, 21 himself 
climbs a high ridge line and disappears. His seven year reign, one of the longest in Yellowstone history, is over. The loss leaves the Druids reeling and desperate for a leader. Some even abandon the pack. This could finally be Black Wolf's moment. But not so fast. A new candidate saunters into the valley. Another dark stranger. And he intends to rule the Druid pack himself. The newcomer to the valley is no stranger. He's actually Black Wolf's younger brother, a male called 480. Black Wolf seems like a shoe-in for the Alpha Spot, but he's made a habit of doing the opposite of what's expected. He puts up no challenge and lets his brother 480 take over as Alpha. After all, he's done just fine without being in charge. Why change now? He'll stay focused on the females and let his brother make decisions protect the pack, and lead them on the hunt. With 480 in charge, the Druid Peak pack begins to recover. But the stability is brief. Without warning, an army pours into the valley. A surprise attack. A new enemy from the north has been steadily growing in numbers. Now it's one of Yellowstone's biggest and most aggressive packs. They want to expand their territory by conquering the Druids. For the second time in his life, Black Wolf is on the losing side, outnumbered and on the run. As the Druids flee, he falls back on old instincts. He makes a beeline for the park road, his sanctuary. Behind him, the victorious Northern Pack celebrates its conquest. The Valley of the Druids is theirs. In crisis, wolves sometimes abandon their pack. A fresh start could be waiting for Black Wolf just over the next hill. But instead, the former rambler picks up the scent of his packmates and joins them in exile. Miss of Lavender. It is a bleak time. Disease sweeps through Yellowstone. In 2005, no druid pups survive. Under the strain, the pack fragments. The once mighty druid clan dwindles to just four wolves. Black Wolf, the Alpha 480, and two females. Every scrap of food is precious. In exile, Black Wolf begins to change. Once he was a loner, now he's fighting for his pack. Together, the four wolves survive to greet another spring.
This year, fortunes turn. Two litters of pups are born. Black Wolf is likely the father of some. The eight little ones evade disease. They grow into the new foot soldiers of the Druid pack. After two years in exile, the Druids are eager to take back what is theirs. Now, they are an army 12 wolves strong. Near the end of 2006, they launch their counterattack. They catch some of the northern pack by surprise as they feed on a kill. Black Wolf is in the thick of the fray. By day's end, the richest hunting grounds in Yellowstone belong to the Druids once again. Black Wolf is now six years old, a tough animal, and the Druids' best hunter. He scores kill after kill for his pack. By now, he provides for the family as much as any alpha. He should be settling into his golden years as a pack elder, but new problems keep turning up. On the fringes of Druid territory, history is repeating itself with a twist. A young crooner has appeared. And he's romancing the druid females. It's the Alpha's job to kick out intruders. But 480 is not on the case. He doesn't seem to care what his daughters get up to. Black Wolf, on the other hand, definitely mines. A sneaky tryst with the Alpha's daughter is his trick. No young upstart is going to beat him at his own game. Black Wolf brings all his power to bear on the intruder. He's built like a tank. But the spry Don Juan is a slippery opponent, running circles around his aging rival. It's like he's using pages out of Black Wolf's old playbook. Clearly, other males can pull off the Casanova strategy as well as he can. If the old wolf is going to do the work of an alpha, he should at least get the benefits. But no he still has to endure life as a subordinate. 480 never misses a chance to remind him who's boss. It could be that Black Wolf has finally outgrown the Druids.
In the fall of 2008, the elderly eight-year-old abandons the pack he worked so hard to join. It's a bold move that's usually reserved for wolves a quarter his age, journeying into a new territory, looking for a mate. But this time, he's not alone. He actually tags along with five dispersing young males. His bachelor gang heads west, roaming boldly through territory claimed by other packs. Until they come to a high range called the Blacktail Plateau. The land is free, with no resident pack. There is plentiful game here. And above all, a female wolf with two young companions. With seven youngsters hanging around, the two adults court and forge a pair bond. Almost by default, Black Wolf becomes the alpha male of his own pack at last. Yellowstone wolves seldom live past five. Black Wolf is nearly 10. He has lived through war, exile, and famine. He has hunted elk by the hundreds. Few wolves can match his experience. The younger ones may be faster and better at the chase. The old wolf arrives late to the scene, but he still has the muscle to deal a finishing blow to a bull elk. Under his steady leadership, the new pack thrives. After years shirking responsibility and breaking rules, Black Wolf now keeps order within his pack. And after years as an opportunist who perfected the art of mating on the sly, now he enforces his sole right to breed. It has been a long journey from renegade to alpha. In early October 2009, he sets out to patrol his territory. He never returns. He probably clashed with enemy wolves and died defending his pack's home. He lived longer than almost any wolf in Yellowstone by avoiding such conflict. He likely sired more offspring than any other male, nearly all of them in secret. A strategy he didn't invent, but may have perfected. Just before the end, he witnessed the birth of one final litter, the only pups he ever fathered as an alpha male. In Yellowstone, the Blacktail Plateau Pack lives on, and with it, the legacy of Black Wolf. In the sweeping wilderness of Yellowstone, the grizzly once ruled alone. Unmatched in size and strength, no creature could challenge the mighty bear. Then came the return of a formidable rival. Tall, rangy wolves from the north now stake their claim to Yellowstone. And somewhere in the backcountry, an epic battle unfolds. It's a clash that echoes all through Yellowstone.
in the cauldron of this wilderness host to lose. Will wolves be the new masters of Yellowstone? Or can the grizzly keep its kingdom and emerge the victor? It's spring in the northwest corner of Wyoming. The year is about to begin for the Grizzlies of Yellowstone. By early March, bears begin to emerge from their long winter's nap. They may not have eaten a thing, and with snow still deep, a female and three cubs search for a winter kill. Otters have been out all winter, slipping and sliding between streams, looking for patches of open water. They're kept under close watch by a coyote. He's on a constant search for food. This is a world of predators, scavengers and opportunists. In the thawing surface layer of ice, the grizzlies find a strange windfall. Entombed in the ice all winter, frozen fish are the first banquet of the year for the bears. While the bears search for another easy meal, the wolves of the Hayden pack gather to feast on the rewards of their own hard work. But a bold young bear has found their carcass, and a grizzly is accustomed to taking what he wants. The Hayden wolves size up the situation. The pack is nine wolves strong, and this is not the largest of bears. He's tried to bury the carcass and defends it from the center of his earthworks. It's his strength against their speed. But the wolves seem to think they can take him. The Haydens prove to be more than the young bear can handle. This time. Bears or wolves, it makes no difference to the ravens. They always make their point, but manage to stay above the competition. Bison will face both wolves and bears over the course of their lives, but the first challenge for newborn calves is just keeping up with their mothers. They're on their way to summer pastures, and for the calves, it's sink or swim.
Instinctively, the calves seek shelter next to their mothers. But the waters are cold and fast. Too fast for the tiny calves. One has been swept into a log jam and is in real trouble. His mother has suddenly realized what's happening. The calf breaks free but is not out of danger. Calves often lose their mothers during river crossings and without her he can't survive. This calf is a lucky one. He's safe, though utterly exhausted. The Yellowstone River was just one of the first of many perils to come. A grizzly is following behind them, and for the bear, it's hunting season. <laughs> Yellowstone's 3,500 bison are the largest free-ranging bison herd in the world. As they gather on the greening meadows of Hayden Valley, the old frontier looks very much alive. It's a scene one old grizzly has witnessed many times. This rugged veteran has roamed Yellowstone for almost 20 years, long before wolves were brought back to the park. He is bear number 211, known to bear watchers as Scarface. In his youth, he hunted bison in this great valley. Now, he leaves such high-risk work to a younger generation. The bear has no advantage of surprise, yet he suddenly swings into action. Chase is just youthful exuberance. There's not much hope of success. The bear will need a better strategy. But a truly devious plan is a coyote's speciality. He's so small, no one takes him seriously. He tests a calf. This one's big and strong. Then he finds a smaller one. He pretends to play, but this is no game. If the coyote can coax the calf off by itself, he has every intention of killing it. Just one bite could cripple the calf. Some motherly backup puts an end to all that.
Another grizzly is on the carving grounds, and this one has perfected his craft. The grizzly uses his top speed of 56 kilometers per hour to separate a calf from its mother. And though the bison weighs twice as much as the bear, she's young and undone by the grizzly's aggression. She hesitates and her calf is lost. For hunters and hunted alike, each encounter in Yellowstone presents a critical choice. What is brave one moment is foolish the next. To fight or to flee, all of life hangs on the decision. With two wolves out on the prowl, a mother elk weighs her options carefully. The wolves have seen her, but not her calf. It's too young to outrun the wolves. Its only defense is to hide and keep completely still. Its mother head straight for the wolves. Her purpose is to distract them, to keep their attention entirely on her. Again and again she charges, then invites them to chase her using the river as a safe retreat. She can play this game against two wolves, but she would never attempt this with an entire wolf pack. Frustrated, the wolves give up. The calf owes its life to the tactics and the courage of its mother. Motherhood, even for a grizzly bear, is a test of character. It's June and a spring snow squall has kicked up, but the bear and her cub are confronting more than just the weather. Mm. Wolves from the druid pack have caught them out in the open. In the tug of war between grizzlies and wolves, the wolves attack where they can. They are after the cub. If they can kill it, they will eliminate a future rival. She's not a big bear, but she stands her ground. 
the wolves won't risk an injury. Suddenly, it's over. The wolves make a decision, and the bears are free to go. As the two dominant predators in Yellowstone, grizzlies and wolves, make life hard for each other. The cub is vulnerable to the wolves now. If he survives to become a really big bear, the tables will turn. But he'll be a cub for a long time yet, and growing up is a full-time job. Things are even more interesting with a brother or sister. Cubs can turn anything into a toy. Every game lets them discover what they can do. And their mother is always there to supervise. For grizzlies, these are the days of family life. They'll spend two and a half years under the constant care of their mother. Then the cubs will be big enough to go their separate ways and travel through Yellowstone alone. Until then, she is everything they need. A wolf's lifestyle couldn't be more different. Wolf pups are used to large families. There are five pups in the average litter. At one month old, they begin to venture away from the den. Their mother is the alpha female, the white wolf with the research collar. But they have other guardians too. Older brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. A member of the family is always in attendance. When the pups grow up, many will disperse to other packs, looking for a place to belong. Wolves will always be drawn to each other's company. A grizzly ambles along a trail on his solitary way above the den. It's old Scarface. He probably means the pups no harm, but he's come far too close for the wolves' comfort. The adults treat him as a serious threat. the pups first encounter with a bear and their elders have shown them something together they can challenge a grizzly and defeat it as for Scarface he hasn't lived this long without knowing how to avoid real conflict
By the end of June, the high country is bright with color. Summer residents are settling in. They're claiming territories, building homes, finding partners. Even grizzlies get caught up in the social scene. It's the mating season. A courting couple could be mistaken for youngsters playing. But for grizzlies, this is romance. Once she has accepted him, they will wrestle and play and mate many times staying together for 10 days or so. But their devotion will be fleeting. Enduring bonds are not in their nature. Yet, while it lasts, they share a moment of tenderness grizzlies seldom display. While the mating season brings solitary grizzlies together, it sends the companionable bison into an uproar. Bulls are built for the battles of the rut. They wield their massive heads as both weapon and defense. They must protect their own bodies as they twist and turn, pressing for an advantage. They are one-ton warriors, and each breeding season more than a few are fatally wounded. This young bull must have taken on more than his match and has suffered a head injury. Round and round he turns, unable to find his way forward. Remarkably, he makes it to solid ground. Bison are as tough as they come. Days later, the injured bull staggers on, alone, but still alive. For the Grizzlies, this year's battle for Yellowstone is coming to a close. It's beginning to snow. One by one, the bears retreat to their dens. Winter settles in. The snow brings elk down from the high country to wintering grounds in the valleys. And wherever the elk go, the wolves follow. 
Winter is the season when wolves are riding high. Severe conditions always work in their favor, wearing down their prey. The deeper the snow, the better the hunting. No bears will contest the carcass, but many other scavengers gather at the feast. Eagles, ravens, magpies and coyotes are uninvited guests at every kill. Though wolves have the undisputed upper hand, they make the long winter easier for all these other carnivores. As long as there are elk, the wolves will provide. But all these hungry scavengers steal so much meat that they may be one reason why the wolves form packs, to protect their own share of the kill. Come February, wolves go visiting, pack to pack. Now is their season for courting and mating. If a stranger comes calling, yearling females and pups come out to greet him. He'll please them all if he can, but what he's really after is a willing partner and a private rendezvous. Yet even the most intimate moment often requires the pack's approval. The alpha pair that leads the pack may share a bond that lasts for life. But all this togetherness comes down to just one thing. Wolves need each other. Wolves are accustomed to working year-round and feeding many mouths. But come the end of winter, it can take the abilities of a bear to get the job done. As the ice begins to thaw, a frozen pond becomes treacherous. Solid one moment, soft the next. A wolf has discovered its most recent victim. The wolves weigh about 45 kilos and cannot trust the ice to hold them. They can see the carcass and would take the hand out, but it just isn't worth the risk. As the pond continues to freeze and thaw, coyotes venture onto the ice. At 14 kilos, they are light enough to cross it, but not strong enough to move the carcass. If the ice melts much more, they won't be able to reach the carcass at all. For once, a grizzly, fresh from his den, arrives as something of a hero. He's certain to fall through.
but his massive strength will come to the rescue. It's only when his coat is soaking wet that you can see how thin he is and why this carcass is worth so much effort. As the bear reaches shore with the prize, even the ravens can appreciate his labors. And there'll be bones for the coyotes, after all. sends an eerie smoke through the remains of a forest fire. It's moisture vaporizing from the blackened trunks as they warm up in the sun. Though the fire killed the trees, a wild garden springs up at their charred feet, rich with minerals from the ash. Grizzlies seek out this fresh, nutritious salad. A great grey owl dozes at the edge of a burn. He's been up all night hunting. But a robin has a nest nearby. In Yellowstone, conflicts can flare up in any corner. Until the owl leaves, there'll be no rest for either of them. A grizzly has come to the recovering burn to feast on daisies, asters, fireweed and cow parsnip, teaching her yearling cub that this is a good place to forage. A cub has to learn a great variety of plants and where to find them at what time of year. And while one cub studies this lesson, another follows its mother onto the carving grounds of the elk. Grizzlies aren't full-time predators like the wolves, but they still take their toll of elk calves each spring. The bear moves through the grass with a purpose. She relies on her nose, testing the air and searching the ground for the scent of elk. It's all her tiny cub can do to keep up. brief dance between birth and death will be over in a moment. For the cub, it's a first step in honing a skill that will help him succeed in Yellowstone. Yet bears have many ways to make a living. Wolves must hunt to survive. But a grizzly's life is full of choice. Old Scarface may no longer be able to chase down elk, but he's managed to catch a fish.
land as he wanders his range. There will be mushrooms and dandelions, ants and earthworms, biscuit root and berries to harvest. The grizzly needs a kingdom vast and varied and complex. He needs all of Yellowstone. In this cauldron of competition and conflict, a grizzly sometimes gets to relax. He retrieves a mule deer he has stashed in the grass by the lake. And for once, he has a whole carcass to himself. Well, almost. He takes his time over a delicate morsel. It's not often he gets to enjoy the little things in life. Then, after lunch, a nap. That is, until biting flies discover the grass-covered carrion he's using for a pillow. He retreats to the cool waters for some sweet relief. By the end of summer, all activity is focused on the coming winter. Grizzlies head up high for the most important harvest of the year. The Clark's Nutcracker is up there already, collecting the seeds of the white bark pine. Squirrels are also gathering their winter seed store. The birds will disperse the seeds, but the squirrels will cache them. And that's what the grizzly is looking for. The bear digs up their work. The seeds are rich in fats, and the bear takes in as many calories as she can. These seeds are crucial to grizzlies, but the cones don't fall to the ground. Grizzlies often rely on someone else to climb up and harvest them. Black bears can make it almost to the top. They'll bring the branches and cones to the ground and in reach of the grizzly. The mighty bear may be dominant among these many creatures, but she's also dependent 
on all their efforts. In this tale of two predators, each succeeds according to its nature. This enormous male is waiting on the wolves. He's staked out in the territory of the Molly's pack. And here they come, right on schedule. Instead of starting some kind of fight, the grizzly tags along with the pack. The bear is huge. He looks to be almost 300 kilos, and the wolves seem resigned to his presence. The wolves attend to their task. They are here to hunt. The bear lets them go. He's in no hurry. But as soon as the wolves have accomplished a kill, he's suddenly quick on the scene. This is the way of things in Yellowstone. A wolf pack working together is the greatest predator there is. But even the mollies, 14 wolves strong, know how to step aside for one large bear. A grizzly in his prime is the master here. He makes the most of the skills of others and takes from them all in turn. The wolves must simply bide their time and wait for him to leave. Old Scarface is past challenging a wolf pack. He's up in the white bark pine forest, where it's already starting to snow. Winter is closing in. The pine seeds are all but gone. Soon, there'll be nothing left to eat. Slowly, Limping now with age and effort, he makes the climb up the snowy slope. His den and a long winter's rest are waiting. By the end of November, the grizzlies of Yellowstone have gone to bed. Once again, Yellowstone is wolf country. At least, that's how the story is supposed to end. But here, on Christmas Day, four weeks late for hibernation, a grizzly sits on a wolf kill. Is this the start of something new? A grizzly, out in winter, breaking all the rules? The coyote grabs a bite and runs. This is not good news to him. Will the bear be waiting at every kill all winter? The bear is wide awake. 
and appears to enjoy being out past his bedtime. After all, it is Christmas, and he's discovered a satisfying secret. Although it's winter, he may not have to hide from hunger. Wolves are doing the hunting for him.